and welcome to the show. It's good to be back after the first rest week of the season. Some of our clubs will have used that weekend off to reset and try and get their campaign going again. And two of those teams are on display in Lancashire. Preston Grasshoppers have had a tough return to National 2 North, winning just one of their opening five games. Sheffield Tigers have exactly the same form and they want their first win since the opening day of the season. Perhaps a first win at Lightfoot Green Lane in nearly a decade could turn their fortunes. Pearson. Oh, look at that muscled away from Will Bennett. And Preston showing the physicality and he's getting some quick hands as well. Just the, lacking the accuracy on the wings. I feel it whipping around in the stand and it looks like it's coming from the southwest. It should really help the kicker in this position. Here's Pearson though with the punt. And no problems for the number 10 for Preston. And he's soaked up the early pressure. Preston lead. Number 8 keeping it between his feet. Gives it to a scrum half. And now they can spread it out. Keoghan looking to burst through the gap. Oh, it's terrific. Space for Jacob yeah, Brown. terrific. Brown bursting through the Tigers' defence. They lost their bite and brilliant work from Preston Grasshoppers. A deserved first try after 13 minutes. Yeah, I think so. And really instinctive play there from uh, from Ed Keohane, uh, attacking the line, keeping his hands free in the in the tackle, and just with that very short offload to his left to Jacob Brown, who was able just to almost wander over unopposed, wasn't he? But yeah, fabulous play from Hoppers. Really good stuff. Redfern picking up the pieces, and again, Sheffield Tigers now finding themselves on the 10, on the 22. But an offside from Preston Grasshoppers gives them a chance from the penalty. So, Mark Island looking to score his fifth penalty of the season from five. And no problems for the number 10, maintaining his 100% record on the tee. And it puts Sheffield Tigers on the board. It's taken them half an hour to do it. Molding coming back inside. Might be able to keep going, but... He's trying to make score. a nuisance, but there is the try. Terrific score from Richardson. Scott Richardson writhing as he got to the try line and managed to get that ball down under intense defensive pressure, but a good score there for Preston. Well, physicality has been such a key part of what's been so good about Preston Grasshoppers today. You combine that with direct play and creativity, and that is a potent cocktail, which is going to guarantee tries. There's another error. Dorrington straight onto it. Sheffield Tigers just full of errors, passing it off to Gale. Brilliant stuff from Preston, instinctive and charging and direct. And there's another pass, and there goes Ben Dorrington, who really deserves a try today. Preston in full flight as they pounce on the Sheffield Tigers' mistake. Terrific from Dorrington, that wasn't it? He really was, uh, really was quick to snap all that loose ball. Really good bit of support from Ben, and he just took him, takes him over just to the left of the sticks. About eight men behind the ball. Oh, we will need to set a bit up. Here's this man gone over on the far side. Well, Sheffield Tigers, it's taken them 79 minutes to find a try in this game. And now they finally have one. It's been a game effort from them, hasn't it? You'd have to say they probably deserve that uh, through their defensive play. Broadly breaking away quickly from the penalty. All of a sudden, Sheffield Tigers on the five metre. A step from Goatley. Desperately trying to hold him up, but has he gone down? And he has. Well, they've, they waited until five minutes to go of normal time to start really playing competitively. And finally, they've done it and they've managed to get two tries out of it. Sheffield Tigers pouncing in the last five minutes to get themselves a losing bonus. Full time, Preston Grasshoppers 24, Sheffield Tigers 18. Uh, I think uh, for 60 minutes we wanted it more. I think we, we worked really hard uh, in our defence, making them cough up errors. And then in attack, where the ball was turned over, we worked really hard to get forward on front foot. And I think we just fell off in the last 15, 10 minutes and let them back. It looked like they got back into the game. You got the second try of the day. I took a bit of muscles to get it as well. Yeah, yeah, I might keep the legs pumping and found myself at the line, which was uh, very good. Enjoyed that. I think we've, uh, we finished there. We looked gutted. But a win's a win in this league. It's tough to pick up wins. It was great to get the, the second win at home. I think we've got to look at our home games and win them and pick up a few away games if we can on the road. Let's head to National 1 as Rams and Cambridge faced off in the battle of the 100 percenters. Rams and Cambridge have been playing brilliantly so far this season, but it was the hosts who were dominant in the first half. Alex Sears scoring their third try for a 19-7 half-time lead. 
With Robbie Stapley giving them a bonus, Cambridge started to come back. Kwaku Asiado grabbed two tries in six minutes to get on the front foot. A penalty try put the blood and sand three points away. The winning chance looked on for a stolen line out in the last play, but it was knocked on. One team with an eye on that clash were Roslyn Park. The second place side started off well against Darlington Moden Park. Charlie Walker getting them started. DMP rallied to be level at the break, but Parks' expansive play was too hot to handle. Matt Gordon ensuring five points were taken back to London. Bowden Park did give them a scare though with some impressive work. Morgan Passman was a constant threat, earning two tries. Ben Franklin scoring two points. At Molesley Road, Isha made a rapid start thanks to star man Sam Morley, who powered under the post three minutes in on the way to two tries. Taunton Titans were equal to the challenge though, Isaac Dalton powering over for the lead at half time before Jordan Petherbridge secured the bonus. Nathan Jabulu gave the second bottom side second wind with six minutes to go. Facing 14 men, they couldn't make it count, an error gifting Jordan Gott a penalty. There appeared to be cheers of victory coming from Kingsley Road. Only the second time this season when Jason Morrill's sixth try of the season put them eight points clear. With 12 minutes to go, Plymouth Albion sparked into life. Phil Jones running onto this ball in the last play for a stunning comeback win. We've got to, we've got to look at uh, some of the positives that we can take out of today. I mean, like Willie Ryan had an outstanding game from number eight. We had uh, some other really positive performances from individuals within the within the squad. So we are building, we are heading in the in the right direction, but we're just not seeing it on the scoreboards because ultimately we're not able to finish off games. A scrappy affair at Silver Lees saw Birmingham Mosley lead at the break. Scrum half Jack Coombs taping his way to the line. Bishop Stortford was struggling to string plays together and a period with two Simbins saw the Birmingham side capitalise, Rob Knox scoring. It will be the host to stay though with a comeback of four tries in 13 minutes. Rob Ayrton grabbing two as his second try secured victory. This week's battle at the bottom was a corker. Leeds Tykes composure put them 14 points clear with half an hour to go. Saramaya Terabagachi scoring. Hull, while winless, have shown plenty of impressive play and a reward seemed to be coming when Charlie Beach drew them level. A missed opportunity for Harvey Harding would cost Hull as fullback Kieran Davies won the day for Leeds Tykes by one try. But that was not the biggest drama of the day. A cracker at Cinderford. Sale FC were dominant in the first 40 as Tom Walsh's second try ensured a scoring bonus before the whistle. Sitting 13 points behind, the Stags turned it around. Nathan Taylor and Mike Austin struck either side of the break to be six points down. Sale has a chance at the death to nick it from Kieran Wilkinson's boot, but his penalty was wide of the mark. Cue Cinderford celebrations. What an incredible day at National 1. No game was separated by more than eight points when the full-time whistles were blown across the country. Rams keep their place at the top of the table ahead of fellow 100%ers Rosslyn Park. Dinderford overtakes LFC in the only other change to the top half. Leeds Tykes continue to climb up two places while Taunton Titans enjoy the same ascendancy. Two bonus points were won by the bottom four teams. Here's the rest of the Nat 2 North action. Could Hull Ionians keep up their winning momentum at Branton and Park? The answer is yes. And emphatically, Hull Ionians started a 10-try hammering of Huddersfield in minute one as Charlie Kirk finished off a scything move immediately from the kickoff. The visitors scored twice in the first half but had no response in the second, setting the stage for Sam Wilson to bag a hat-trick as the 30th birthday present. Sedgley Park grabbed another bonus point win opportunity with both hands when they cruised past Bladen at Crowtrees, Reese Henderson with five of them. The Newcastle side enjoyed some creative moments, but their errors handed over victory. The question asked by Sedgley Park, could leaders filed also get the win? The Lancashire side travelled to third place Rotherham Titans, but this did not phase Fylde, Connor Wilkinson winning this kick and chase. 
The hosts have been unbeaten at home since their relegation from National 1 in 2020, but that was brought to a bruising end. The visitors putting three unanswered tries past them in the second 40. I think we actually grew into the game. Um, you know, there were a few mistakes first half where um, you know the ball pinged out to the rook once or twice and um, the game was very close, but we, we managed to keep our composure and keep going. Um, and, and our game management got better as the game went on. Um, you know, it's, and it's that keeping a calm head when things aren't going well that that was uh, really good today. Uh, obviously disappointed. Uh, it's still very, very raw. Um, we obviously haven't lost at home for a long period of time. Our first loss at home in National 2. We, we can all take a loss. We don't mind being beaten and we were beaten by a better team today, but it's the manner in which we lost that we'll have a good look at ourselves and have to reboot before next week. 50 miles north, Sheffield ensured Harrogate would not take back-to-back -back wins with a seven-try display, Chris Hooper taking a hat-trick. The second bottom side did take a scoring bonus though through Will Yates, but gaps in defence were torn open by the promoted side, Ryan Burrows finishing them off. At the Avenue, the meeting of the Dales saw Tyndale make the best start, Captain Chris Wearmouth driving over twice in the space of five minutes. The Northeasterners came to Yorkshire having lost two on the bounce, but Jake Rogers' score after the break ensured they would take the win. Wharfdale eventually found their bite heading into the final quarter of the match, Ryan Carlson scoring their third to ensure a losing bonus. And what a clash in Cheshire. Chester, unbeaten in three, were caught by surprise when Otley charged down their kick and Brett Malthouse landed on the loose ball. The Hare Lane side were able to rally, winning the battle of the packs in the first half as Sam Breary found space for the second try. Step in Otley super subs Blake Morgan and Callum Irvin, who combined twice to ensure five points were taken home in a dominant second 40. A day for fast starts in National 2 North. 27 of the 53 tries came before the half-time whistle in the seven games. Fylde continued to lead the way after a big test holding off Sedgley Park. Hull Ionians, Leapfrog, Rotherham Titans, Tyndale and Otley are into the top half. Wolfdale and Chester's losses mean they drop into the bottom. Preston Grasshopper's win allows them to overtake Sheffield Tigers. The bottom three remain the same. In National 2 East, could North Walsham cause another upset as they welcome Barnes to East Anglia? This time, the answer was no. Barnes were able to secure back-to-back -back wins against promoted sides, Will Lewin getting them started. North Walsham could not cope with Barnes' expansive style of play. It gave the Londoners six tries, Patrick McDool grabbing two of them. On the island, Guernsey were in a rampant mood against Westcliff as they scored 11 tries. They had a scoring bonus point after just half an hour thanks to Ethan Smith. Four tries and 20 minutes for Guernsey put them out of sight. Charlie Simmons bringing the route to an end. Worthing Raiders are certainly finding their feet again. They were back in their best at Bury St Edmunds, Curtis Barnes with the fifth try of the season. The Haberdon side were competitive in the first half to be just seven points behind, but Worthing were out of sight in 52 minutes when Tom Bowen finished this move. It's the first home loss of the season for Bury St Edmunds. Ewan Kingdon scored their only try of the first half. Narrow margins defined Canterbury's clash with Dorking. The host led at half-time thanks to a pair of tries from winger Frank Morgan. But the promoted side, who love drama, rallied after the break. James Catton's 80th minute score drew them level and Henry Anscombe's boot ensuring a thrilling win for the men from Surrey. Really disappointed for the result for us. We had plenty of possession and plenty of opportunities for us to put a good lead together. But errors with the ball, errors off set piece, um, just sort of made it hard for us to do any pressure. You know, massive congratulations to Dawkin. I, I thought they uh, definitely deserved it. Um, but very close encounter. A tug of war unfolded in Essex. Rockford 100 went ahead by three points on the stroke of half-time, thanks to Ricky Gold returning from injury with a try. Seven Oaks have been hard to handle this season with their wide play, and that's helped Shaden Osgood power over to give the promoted side the lead. But the depth of squad would win the day for Rockford. 
Seth Mokioli went over in the final quarter for the five points and a first win since round two. Let's head to Dryleys where a breakthrough from a three all halftime score came to Henley Hawks. It took just a minute for Ben Manning to score. This would give the Hawks momentum to score two more tries. They came five minutes apart, Rory Mason finishing off a team move. Tombridge Juddians have three wins and three losses so far. Joe Duffy's late effort merely a consolation for the Kent side. And an upset at the Woolhams, James Shornham brought Blackheath back to his old club, Old Albanian, second before kickoff. But Kaz Henderson did not give him a warm welcome. The Wellhall side had to be at their best. Former OA's man Ollie Wallacher found a way through twice for a slender lead at half time. A tenth second half was edged by Old Albanian in a five minute spell. As Sam Jones drew them level, Kent Price's winner handed Blackheath a first defeat and sent the home fans wild. Five of the seven games saw teams separated by seven points or less. Plenty of character on display in National 2 East. We have a new team at the top in Old Albanian, topping Blackheath. Wins for Dorking and Barnes mean they slip down to fourth. Rockford Hundreds rise as the only other change at the top. Tombridge Judd-Irons and Bury St Edmunds are the teams that suffer. Guernsey's win puts them up two places. Seven Oaks have dropped into the bottom three in a worrying slip. And let's finish in National 2 West with a battle of promoted sides in Western Supermare. Visitors Exeter wasted no time putting their first Nat 2 West defeat of the season behind them. Hooker Scott Butterworth helping them stretch to an 18-point lead over Hornets in the first 35 minutes. While the hosts have struggled for consistency, they have provided drama. And a pair of tries, the second by Aidan Chenoweth, looked to be setting up another cracker. When these sides met last year in South West Premier, they shared 108 points. 12 tries here saw the students take it narrowly. In Birmingham, Clifton maintained their high scoring ways with nine tries at Bourneville. Zach Hamid finishing off in style. The Chocos did rally late on to secure a scoring bonus as Ryan Burrows bundled over the line, but the damage had already been done by the Bristol outfit. Back down the M5, Old Red Cliffians enjoyed a competitive first 40 as they went into the break 19 all against Leicester Lions, John Cook drawing them level. The Midlands side, wounded from last week's defeat to Ding's Crusaders, rallied to put 26 unanswered points on the board, Johnny Murdoch scoring on 55 minutes. The third side in Bristol could enjoy watching their fellow high flyers as they put eight past Barnstable, debutant Kieran Donoghue with the fourth. Ding's Crusaders were in full flow for the second half, and centre Matt Smith capitalised on this to score four times on a memorable day at Shaftesbury Park. You know, Boris will made us uh, work work hard um, for a, a lot of the points, but um, you know, still score 52 points. The, the boys put put uh, bits bits of performance together today. I think for us, we're just obviously building building slowly, and uh, we've got a big game next week. And uh, this this week coming up, we'll be all right building towards Red Roof next week. Let's head to Leicester Road where Hinkley got going against Stourbridge from the first move. Rory Val's chip landed on by Sam Everett, his first try at the club. While the visitors looked much improved after the rest week, the Leicester side were able to keep them at arm's length thanks to Shea Nixon's four tries. Starbridge were able to take a losing bonus point back to Birmingham when Chad Thorne benefited from a late drive over the line. A real locking of horns took place in Herefordshire. Buptonians jumped out of the blocks when Connor Danan powered over from close range. Red Ruth were able to repel further attacks and even seven moles in a row and their reward was a half-time lead through Tommy Phillips' score just before the whistle. The second half was equally tight until two luck sin bins opened the field enough for Dean Bonds and Will Truen to stroll over for the bonus point win. And a stunner in Shropshire. Newport Salop's errors gifted Loughborough students a 17-0 lead at half-time. Sebastian Smith with their third try. Henry Vaca led the side out on his 150th appearance for the home side and his hat-trick helped Newport surge into the lead with four tries in 16 minutes. Only one of those tries was converted though, keeping the students in the game and their pack hammered away to put Smith over for a second 
securing a battling win. Well, what a day in National 2 West. 71 tries were scored across the seven games. Check out the YouTube channel for loads of exciting content. It's as you were in the top six, with all the teams taking scoring bonus point wins. Loughborough students' efforts in Shropshire pull them into the top half. They take Lucktonian's place, whose loss also pushes Old Redcliffians down. The bottom five are the same, Newport Salops two points put them five clear of relegation. Well that's it from Preston, as the Grasshoppers put in a hop, skip and a jump to tame Sheffield Tigers. See you next week. What's up guys, Warren Muggleson here. Thank you so much for watching that National League Rugby video. For more from the third and fourth tiers of English Rugby, subscribe just over here. And don't forget to click the bell so you're notified when new videos are published.